Oh no, you don't look so well. What seems to be the problem? Oh doctor, for as long as I know, I've always been tired and fatigued compared to my other friends. Just the other day we had a big soccer game and I was so tired 10 minutes into the game. My mom told me to come see you as maybe you can explain what's going on. I'm so sorry to hear that. Let's run you through a checkup to see what's going on. I seem to hear a heart murmur. From what I hear through the stethoscope, your heartbeat seems to be irregular. To have a better look, I'll run an ECG of your heart. Your ECG shows that there is a problem. You seem to have stenosis. Steno what? Doctor, I'm only in grade 6. I have no clue what that even means. Oh sorry, I forgot. Stenosis is a constriction of a tube-like structure in your body. Usually tubular structures are used to transport fluids such as blood. Stenosis can occur in many areas of the body, but in your situation it has occurred in the heart. That sounds scary, but also interesting. Where in the heart does stenosis affect me? I like that you're interested. In your situation, stenosis is occurring in your aortic valve. This is the valve that divides the left ventricle filled with oxygen-rich blood to the aorta that directs blood to all parts of your body. This valve consists of three leaflets, also known as cuspid, making the whole unit tricuspid, as shown here. So what is the connection between stenosis and the aortic valve? I was just about to get to that. Stenosis causes the valve not to open and close all the way. This is a problem because overall blood flow will reduce, and in turn, not enough oxygen will reach throughout your body, especially when your body demands it more while playing soccer. There are three main causes of aortic valve stenosis. One of the causes is congenital heart defect. This is when the disease occurs at birth and involves a deformity of the aortic valve. This is the reason for your aortic valve stenosis. Another cause is it occurs much later in life and gradual buildup of calcium in the aortic valve. Calcium is an important mineral in our body and over time it may build up and cause stiffness in the aortic valve. Finally, the last cause is a possible side effect of strep throat called rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever leads to scar tissue developing in the heart, and this can also cause aortic valve stenosis. Some signs and symptoms of aortic valve stenosis include heart murmur, heart palpitation, chest pain, feeling faint or dizzy, fatigue, and shortness of breath. I suspected that you might have aortic valve stenosis after hearing your heart murmur and seeing that you had similar symptoms. This was confirmed after the ECG. So how do you treat it if it's in my heart? Well, each person and their case of stenosis is special, so there are different things we have to look into before recommending a treatment. In most cases, stenosis is mild and only requires us to monitor its progression. However, if the stenosis continues to get worse, we usually perform either an open heart surgery called a surgical aortic valve replacement, also known as SAVR, or a minimally invasive treatment called transcatheter aortic valve implantation, also known as TAVI, using a tube called a catheter. What's the difference? Follow me, I'll show you. This patient right here is just like you, but a bit older and further along their stenosis. They've had an open heart surgery to replace their valve. That is why you can see a big scar on their chest. During surgery, we use this saw to open up the bones that protect your heart. Then we open up the heart, take the valve out and replace it with a plastic one. We also have valves that come from pigs and cows. And these are great because they have live tissue just like the tissue in our valves. This treatment is great, but the surgery can be too hard on older individuals and people who have conditions such as diabetes or obesity. It certainly gets the job done, but for younger people like yourself, you like to stay away from it because it is unnecessary trauma to your body, and most of the time in children, stenosis is not serious enough to warrant treatment at this level. 
Why doesn't this guy have a big scar, doctor? This patient had a TAVR instead of an SAVR. So he only had a small scar on his chest. In TAVR, we make a small cut here on the chest or on your thigh. We then use a medical tube called a catheter and we put the tube in a large artery or vein and move it down towards your stenosis. But doctor, how can you see where you're going? There is a special dye that interacts with the machine that takes x-rays and this helps doctors to see where the catheter is in your body. The new valve is located inside the catheter's tip. So when the doctors have the catheter in the right place, they expand it and the new valve is placed on top of the old valve. Once secured, the catheter is taken out of the body the same way it went in and the operation is complete. That's so cool. Thank you for explaining to me what these treatments are. You're welcome. We have learned quite a lot today. How about for your next checkup? We'll talk about the recoveries and maybe even a special procedure just for you. Can you tell me just a little more, please? Okay, okay. I'll tell you more about the differences between the recoveries of each patient we just met. We want to make sure with any treatment that the procedure goes as easy as possible. This is because the less stress your body is under, the better it can heal. The patient where we perform SNVR on, they will have to be in the hospital for 6 days. Whereas the patient where we perform TAVR will only be here for 4 more days. In fact, in a recent study, it was seen that TAVR patients had significantly shorter hospital stays than those of SAVR. In addition, to another story, we found that patients who have TAVR instead of SAVR overall have a faster recovery rate. What is the importance of this difference? A colleague of mine did their own study and asked people about their lives after the surgery and many people said that their quality of life after TAVR improved significantly. They even said important aspects needed for regaining independence and reducing involuntary loneliness seem to be a sense of coherence and the ability and capacity to rebuild, which patients with TAVR can do quicker than those with SAVR. It may seem like I'm saying SAVR is bad, which I'm not. SAVR is a great treatment option for a lot of people and many places around the world. Use this as the most common treatment for aortic valve stenosis. I just like to teach the newer methods so that people know about their options. I also hope that there is more research to be done in the long term effects of this treatment so that we can make it more accessible to the public. Well that's enough for now. I'll see you on your next visit. Thanks doctor. Welcome back. You feeling any better? Hey doctor, I'm not feeling too good. Still sorry to hear that. Let's run another ECG to see what's going on. It seems like your stenosis has progressed, and if we leave it untreated, I'm worried about your heart's ability to pump blood. I think it's time for a balloon valvuloplasty. What's that? It's a minimally invasive procedure in order to deviate your aortic valve and to allow blood to flow better through your heart. We insert a catheter through one of your veins in your thigh and it goes up to the aortic valve, similar to a TAVR. Once the tip of the catheter rests in the aortic valve, it expands and improves the blood flow of the aortic valve. Then the catheter and the balloon are removed and the procedure is complete. Don't worry, you will not feel anything as you will be asleep. That sounds a little scary, but I want to feel better so I'll be brave. Thank you for all your help, doctor. No problem. I'm happy to see that you're feeling much better.